All right, guys, Ultra Rumble has just released, and if you're like me, you're probably wondering who are the best characters in the game right now to be using to get that dub, and then who are the dog water booty cheeks characters that you want to avoid at all costs. The very first character we're going to talk about and place into this tier list is going to be Deku. Deku has a really cool special ability where he can carry a downed ally. Actually, I shouldn't say cool special ability because a few characters have this ability, uh, but that can be pretty useful given the scenario as long as you're able to get away from the enemy team. The map isn't very big, so sometimes it's hard to get away from the enemy team if you know what I mean. His skills, his black whip skill is really good for comboing and pulling enemies in, grabbing enemies and stuff like that. So he has good combo potential, which can be really, really valuable when it comes to team fights and doing damage. So I wouldn't write him off as a bad character necessarily, but I also wouldn't call him an amazing character in terms of damage. So for that reason, I'm gonna put this Deku in A tier for now. These could change guys, and these are my opinions. They're not in any particular order. So because I put Deku here in A tier, if I put someone else in A tier, it doesn't mean they're behind Deku. It just means they're on the same tier. I'm not like putting them in order in the tiers, just so you guys understand. The next character we're gonna be placing is going to be Bakugo. Bakugo has the special ability to dash in any direction. That is super, super valuable when it comes to closing the gap on an enemy and actually making a difference in a team fight. His piercing shot is really good too, and it has a good range. It's really, it feels great sniping an enemy with his piercing shot. His grenades are cool for throwing them at enemies and doing AOE damage within an area. It is a little bit hard to aim them at points, but it's really cool. He has a lot of range as a character, and I think that range is amazing. It gives him a lot of uh, maneuverability between his special skill, being able to dash towards and away from enemies and using that range. I think if you learn Bakugo's range, you can make him a very usable character, um, but I don't think he's gonna be like, s tier just because he is so he can be so hard to like find that range on right and find that uh ability to do well with him the next character we're going to be placing is uraraka uraraka has the ability to make herself or allies have zero gravity temporarily she can drop rocks with her skill and spin a hammer that's basically everything that uraraka does now the problem with uraraka I would argue is that her skills, the dropping rocks or comets or whatever you want to call them, and the spinning the hammer is easily avoidable. It's pretty obvious when it's going to happen, and I think it really is kind of slow and clunky for her kit. And so for that reason, I'm going to put Uraraka in B tier, just one tier below Deku and Bakugo. I think she can still be good. She might deserve C tier, honestly. I don't know. Uh, I'm giving her B tier, B tier because she has the ability to grapple around and stuff like that. And I guess that's kind of cool. And that's kind of fun for movement ability sake. So we're, we're going to put her in B tier for that. But there, there could be an argument for C tier. The next character we're going to be placing is Ida, another speed character. So Ida can carry an ally on his back while dashing and climbing uh, while dashing and climbing walls. I think he can carry them while climbing walls. I actually haven't tested it while climbing walls, but he can dash up walls at the very least. I don't think any other characters can dash while they're climbing. So that's really, really cool. But yeah, same special skill as Deku essentially. So nothing too special about Ido when it comes to his special skill. He's super fast. And the fact that he can climb walls as fast as he does is annoying but he feels like he lacks real power. And because he feels like he lacks a lot of power uh, when it comes to fights, I'm gonna put him in B tier along with Uraraka. I think he's interesting. I think he's fun to play. I just don't know that he, like these two just have better combos, better damage than these two. And hopefully that makes sense to you guys. These are all my opinions once again. So if you disagree, feel free once again in the comments to share your guys' opinions please, please, please. And I will adjust the tier list as time goes on and we get more into the game as needed. So next after Ida, we have Todoroki. Todoroki shoots fire in an arc in front of him as his special skill and burns over time. It's He's a really good character of uh, range damage and gap close because he has the ability to slide on his ice. And then he also has defense with like his ice wall that he puts up with his skill. So he has a really good combination of like attack damage and defense i feel like for a character uh to put it in the simplest terms possible and so for that reason i'm gonna put him up in a tier just because he's like one of the more versatile characters who can kind of do it all the next character we're going to be placing is sue sue is so much fun to play 
Her maneuverability is really cool. She can use her tongue to pull a downed ally towards you to revive them, which is really neat, honestly. I think that's very, very cool. Um, she lacks damage, and if anything, I would call Sue like a, a poke character. And because she's a poke character, because she lacks consistent, what I call damage, I'll put her in B tier as well alongside Uraraka and Ida. The next character we're gonna be placing is Kirishima. Kirishima, I know a lot of people are like, it, I feel like it's very divided. Like some people really dislike Kirishima, some people really like Kirishima. I guess it just depends on where you land. But Kirishima has the ability to harden with his special skill and that reduces damage, which is amazing. Only character that reduces damage like that. And it prevents him from flinching which is massive and can lead to some insane combos. Kirishima can have some of the best combos in game because of that. Um, and besides the combos, I would say that he has a relatively high difficulty level though, because he lacks range. He doesn't really have any range skills. While his like chopping, he'll do this chopping, does like make him move faster and close the gap on enemies. The fact that he doesn't have ranged skills, I think that's going to put him in A for now. But there could be an argument to put Kirishima in S because he does have that damage reduction, which is like so unique to him and really, really cool. The next character we're going to be placing is Yayurozu. Yayurozu creates an item with her special skill, which is invaluable. Okay, that's really, really good. Uh, she has riot shield bullshit going on the whole time, which is super, super, like probably the bane of my existence. I never thought I would hate Yayurozu so much, but in this game, absolutely hate her. She is terrible. She has like insane sweeping attacks and she's just an amazingly, amazingly rounded character. I way too good. I imagine she gets a nerf, but she absolutely goes in S tier. She is, in my opinion, very, very, like probably the most annoying character in the game ridiculously annoying i don't even know i don't feel like the skill ceiling is that high for her and she's still that annoying and that's that's my problem with her she's just she's really good kaminari is the next character we're going to be placing kaminari can be wrapped in electricity with this special skill so if people touch him essentially uh, they're going to take extra damage which is annoying right his action skills if you want to call them that i guess are his skill for aoe is really really good it's an aoe dome all around him so anyone within that dome gets hit and then he has decent range with his dash skill the dash skill lets him close the gap and then he his regular skill he's able to fire electric balls so i would say he has good range good aoe and good gap close so for that's kind of my criteria for a tier so we're going to put him in a tier as well the next character we're going to be placing is kendo Kendo has the ability to grab an ally and carry or throw them. So essentially the same thing as putting them on your back. Ex the, only, the only difference is you can throw them. So you can potentially throw allies into a fight or throw them away from a fight, although that might leave you alone, which would be a problem. But the ability to engage is kind of unique and really cool. So I'll give that to Kendo. Uh, she can block damage with her hands and she can smack cheeks with her, her big hands. Uh, but overall, I'm not too like thoroughly impressed with her kit, but like, what do you do with a character with big hands, really? Like, they've done what they can, and the ability to throw people into a fight is cool. It might actually screw your teammates over. If you want to grief your teammates, uh, Kendo's the one for you, I guess. But yeah, C tier is where Kendo's gonna go. And that's not even like me hating on Kendo, that's just kind of where she ends up in the game, unfortunately, in my opinion. Next, we have Ibera. Ibera is another character that is probably the bane of everybody's existence right now. So she can wrap a downed ally in thorns and revive them. Okay, that's without like actually reviving them, which is insane. She can hold an enemy in her vines for what feels like an eternity and just essentially kill somebody unless your teammate helps you out. And it's, it's really, really rough. Like she's just insanely good. She has her vines going in all directions to protect her with her other ability. And then she has the ability to uh, reach out in a really long, like direct range with a wide hitbox on her vines as well. Like it's just, she's insane. She's so insane. She's going S tier for sure. A lot of the characters, so most of the characters that are new, right? The uh, Ibra, Yayurozu, they are in S tier. The only new character that I'm not putting in S tier is Kirishima, uh, but they're, like I said, there's an argument to be made to put him in S tier. So yeah, he's going in A tier for now. The next character we're gonna be placing is All Might. All Might can carry a downed ally on his back 
and jump higher than a normal character. So same thing as Deku, except for he has the additional perk of being able to jump higher. And he does amazing damage with his smashes. Like he's really, really like solid damage. But other than that, there's nothing too unique to his kit. And I feel like these other characters just have an edge when it comes to versatility compared to All Might. And I feel like All Might just kind of lacks versatility. So we're going to put him in B tier alongside these other three. The next character we're placing is one of my personal favorites. I have to play him a lot more because he's just so much fun. But it's going to be Cementos. Cementos is probably the most controversial character in the game. I feel like there's people who will put him at the bottom of the tier list, and then there's people like me who would put him at the top of the tier list, and he just runs so goofy, which I love. But Cementos uh, can put cement walls around a downed ally and revive them. So it protects them while you're reviving them, which is insane. That's really, really good, right? But then he can also be the character that just brings chaos to the game because all the walls that he creates can be really helpful to your team, like helping your team get out of a situation or helping your team to kind of, it knocks up an enemy so they can see the enemy with certain moves that Cementos has and stuff like that, but it can also be the troll pick <laughs> and really screw over your allies because let's say your allies die in zone or uh, outside of the zone and they're in the storm. You put up a wall in front of them, they can't crawl back in to the zone and you have just killed your teammate. And it's like, Cementos is just one of those characters who can be really good if played right, but really annoying if played incorrectly. So I feel like that's why there's so many mixed reviews on Cementos, but I think he's probably one of the more fun characters to play overall. And so for that reason, just because like, I feel like his skill ceiling is really, really high to be good and not a troll. I'm going to put him in A tier. Uh, personally, if it was up to me and I, I could be biased, I would put him in S tier because I just love his kit so much and he's so much fun to play. But I feel like A tier is a fair place to put him because he's definitely going to have moments where he messes the team up and he's also going to have moments where he can be clutch for the team so it just depends the next character that we're going to talk about is mount lady mount lady oh my gosh mount mommy is the giant of my dreams like when she's on your team i should say when she's not on your team she is the giant of your nightmares so she becomes a giant with her special skill and after a set amount of attacks have hit her, she'll transform back. But in that amount of time, oh boy, you best just pray. You better just run if you're on the uh, opposing team to Mount Lady because it gets dangerous. Mount Lady is absolutely an S tier character. Just her wide range on the attacks when she transforms is so hard to avoid and so freaking ridiculous that it it's it's hard to win it's hard to win against it so mount lady is just actually insane like she has the most busted special ability in the game i would say so definitely going in s tier for mount lady the next character we're going to talk about is shigaraki we're down to the villains shigaraki is interesting because he is the only character who does this he can do defense down with his special ability so that means the other attacks coming afterwards will do more damage. I believe that's whether it's from you or from your teammates. So your teammates doing more damage is good, right? Now, he can decay things around him over time with his other abilities, and he can dash and grab enemies, which is good too. But I feel like he lacks a lot of range is my problem with him. He doesn't have the versatility that all these guys have uh, with their range. So I'm going to put him in B tier along All Might. I would say he's like about on All Might's level. All Might and Shigaraki, while they're similar, but not similar at the same time, uh, I feel like they belong in the same tier. The next character that we're gonna be talking about is Dobby. I know a lot of people love Dobby and I think Dobby has, there's something to him. So he can light his body on fire and an unleash an AOE around him with his special skill, which does a ton of damage. His traps are, Okay, they're interesting. Um, they're they're hard to make use of, but he is like one of the only characters that has traps like that. I don't know why they chose a flame character like that, but he has the flames that do the traps, and the traps are kind of cool. It's a unique idea, but they're uh, it's hard to use them in a fight. Um, but what's really good is while his traps suck, his other ability allows him to put flames around him, and those flames that go around him 
delete or annihilate or incinerate, whatever you want to call it, all other attacks that are coming from outside the flames. Meaning he can put those flames down around him and revive teammates easier, which is really, really nice when you're trying to help get your teammates up. Like that is an amazing, amazing skill and so, so important and invaluable to getting your teammates up and to winning the fight. And so for that reason, we're going to be putting Dobby into A tier just literally because of that because it's so it's it's really invaluable it's so good the next character we're getting down to the last two characters out of these two we are going to talk about toga first toga oh toga on the verge of death she can become another character and use their skills so by playing toga you now have the ability to play every single character in the game and what that means is you have all of their abilities at your disposal. And what that means is Toga is obviously an S tier character if she can use S tier characters abilities, right? And the problem is with Toga, the only problem is that's going to be such a high skill ceiling to use this character because to use this character, you have to know how to play every other character. So she could be an S tier character. I'm going to put her in S tier, right? She could be an S tier character in the hands of a good player. She could also be a uh, D or terrible tier player if, you know, uh, you put them in the hands of somebody who doesn't know how to play any of these other characters. So it just depends on how good the person playing Toga actually is, whether she's S tier or not. And last but not least, we have Compress. Compress is interesting. Um, he can compress an ally and carry them. They slowly regen health over time. And then he can throw the ally uh, and get them out of situations and stuff like that. Or get them into situations if you wanted, technically. Uh, he is really great at running away. But that's about all that he's good at. He's not good at much else. He's not good in a fight, I feel like. He's good at supporting the team, helping your team run away, get out of situations, and get into a better uh, state or area where they're able to regroup and work together. That's about all I feel like Compress is good for. Now it is, I do love watching him just drop compressed objects on people though, but unfortunately, I feel like I'm gonna do Compress a little bit dirty here, but he is gonna be the only one to go in D tier. Now, it might be a little bit unfair. I know I'm probably making compressed mains mad, but that's just what I've seen so far. He just seems like a very runaway type character, and that's that's my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. That is the tier list. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree, who should be moved up, who should be moved down, and I'll, of course, look at the comments and make adjustments in the next tier list video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Maybe. Anybody out there